People like to have numbers, right? If you think you have to eat 1800 calories a day, that's a really easy number to think about and make your goal. So if you're looking at calories on food labels, they're allowed to be off by 20%, which means the food that you think has 200 calories might have 220 or 230. Simply put, calories are a form of energy. So when we eat food, we get energy from calories, our body's able to use those up. When we're estimating our calorie needs, how many calories we need to either lose weight or maintain our weight, what we're looking at is a combination of three things. Our resting metabolic rate. The biggest chunk of our calorie expenditure actually comes from just what we do at rest. Your body requires energy to pump your heart, to breathe, to have your digestive organs running, all of those things take energy, that's our resting metabolic rate. On top of that, we're going to add any activity that we're doing throughout the day. So a formal workout, whether you go for a jog, lift some weights, that requires additional energy. Also, just any activity that you're doing that's not a workout. So if you're walking the dog or moving around, vacuuming, that all adds up and will add to your energy needs for the day. The other piece of the puzzle is called the thermic effect of food. So you actually do need energy to digest food Food, and that's how we're able to extract the energy from the food that makes up about 10% of most people's calorie needs. So it's again, that combination of our resting metabolic rate, activities that we're doing and the thermic effect of food. My calorie needs are not gonna be the same as your calorie needs and all of us have individual needs based on things like our age, our sex, how much activity we're doing and other metabolic factors, our weight and our height. So when we get our calorie needs estimated, it takes most of these things into an equation. One of the simplest ways to estimate your calorie needs is to use an online calculator. We have one on healthline.com and we'll drop the link below in the description. You'll input some information like your height, your sex, your age, and about how much activity you're getting. And you'll get this number that comes out that is an estimate of your calorie needs. Your activity levels also might vary pretty widely day to day, and you might feel hunger more on a Monday than on a Thursday. So having a set daily calorie limit that's really low may be hard to stick to. Also, when we think about wanting to lose weight by limiting our calories, a lot of times people get stuck in the mindset of, well, if fewer calories is better, then even fewer than that is probably even better and end up going too low. So a simple way people do the math is to look at your calorie needs. Let's say they're about 2000 calories based on your information once you put it into the calorie calculator. Taking out 500 of those calories would give you a rough estimate of how much you need to cut to lose about a pound a week. But I'd recommend going closer to cutting about two to 300 calories a day from that number if you're looking to lose weight for a smaller but more sustainable sustainable weight loss. Lots of low calorie diets also put people between 1,000 to 1,200 calories a day, which is really, really low and not sustainable for most people. So you might lose weight quickly, but you're more likely to fall off that diet and gain it back quickly as well. So again, rather see you making those smaller adjustments and being able to sustain that more likely over time. When we go super low in calories, we're also at risk for nutrient deficiencies, right? Fewer calories, means less food, which means less nutrients. When we look at the research on weight loss, we know sustainability is key, meaning are you able to stick with this diet? So if going ultra low calorie doesn't work for you, try just cutting a little bit of those calories off your diet and see if you're able to maintain that. Same goes for weight gain, adding a little bit more than you need and over time seeing results that you're looking for. People like to have numbers, right? If you think you have to eat 1800 calories a day, that's a really easy number to think about and make your goal. So if you're looking at calories on food labels, they're allowed to be off by 20% which means the food that you think has 200 calories might have 220 or 230. That's one place where we're really looking at estimates at best, not those exact numbers. I think calorie counting and understanding your calorie needs can be a really great starting point for lots of people, but it is not totally perfect, again, because we're underestimating perhaps our energy needs and using nutrition labels that aren't 100% accurate and perhaps overestimating our caloric burn, whether we're using watches or trackers or what the exercise machines at the gyms are telling us. And it just takes the onus off of your internal cues. If you think you have 400 calories at lunch, but you're feeling hungrier, you might be more likely to ignore your body, 
even if it wants just a little bit more that day and might tell you it wants a little bit less the next day. The other thing with calorie counting is it doesn't look at the quality of food that you're eating. So you could have 100 calories of jelly beans and 100 calories of almonds. They're the same calorie wise, but the almonds are gonna give you some heart healthy fats, some fiber, some protein, which is really filling. Jelly beans are just gonna give you some sugar, which is not to say you can never have candy for a snack, but when it comes to calories, the type you're choosing for your overall health and also your hunger levels throughout the day are gonna be really important. So if you do wanna track and look at these numbers, calories aren't the only thing I'd recommend keeping an eye on. You're gonna to wanna to make sure you're getting enough protein, healthy foods that are fiber rich, like fruits and vegetables. If you take all the calories away and all the flavor away and all the fat away from your food, you're left with food that's just not gonna keep you full for very long. And again, this can lead to either giving up on your diet altogether or overeating later in the day or on the weekends because you're just so hungry, your body really wants that nourishment. So make sure you're consistently eating enough and choosing those high quality nutritious foods instead of just thinking about calories. It's important to remember, in addition to calorie counting, being imperfect, our bodies are not machines and are not gonna need the exact same amount of calories every day. A variety of different things influence our energy needs, whether it's activity level, hormones, sleep that we've gotten. So just something to be aware of. Your needs will also change over time. If you're losing weight, your needs will go down. If you are building muscle, your needs might go up. So just because you've got a calculation at one starting point, it's not going to stay the same throughout your journey. Let's talk about when calorie counting might actually be harmful. For many people focusing on calories, can lead to disordered eating and even eating disorders like anorexia and bulimia. So again, if that is you or you think you've been on a diet cycle for a long time, calorie counting is likely not a helpful place to start. For some people who generally have no idea how many calories are in food or what their energy needs might be, it might be a really helpful starting place to calculate their energy needs and to even track food for a little bit, see what they're portioning out into their cereal bowl, see how much salad dressing they're pouring on their salad and get a better understanding of what they're taking in, seeing where they can make adjustments from there. But it is certainly not always a helpful tool and in many cases can be very harmful. Rather than focus on restriction and reducing calories, there are a few tips I like to give to help people eat a more nutritious diet that may lead to weight loss over time as well. So I like to focus on positive changes you can make to your diet, again, rather than thinking about ways you can cut, cut, cut down on calories. So one thing to focus on is making sure you're getting protein at every meal and snack. Protein is a very filling nutrient. It takes longer to digest, so it keeps you satisfied for a long time. Also important to refuel our muscles and for many processes that are happening in our body. So if you want to stay satisfied and not feel hungry, add protein to every meal and snack. Other things to focus on, make sure you're drinking enough water. Staying hydrated is really important for our overall health. And while yes, if you're hungry, you should eat and not drink a glass of water, dehydration may increase our hunger levels and just doesn't make us feel great. So stay hydrated. Another key thing to make sure you're doing for your overall health that may help with weight loss or weight maintenance is exercise, move your body. Whether that's in 10 minute chunks of time where you're walking or doing some squats or you find a program that works for you, even have a dance party in in your kitchen, get active. So like I said, muscle is really helpful for increasing your metabolic rate. Muscle burns more energy than fat. Exercise also has a plethora of other benefits besides weight loss. It helps with stress management and improves our mood. It helps reduce your risk for chronic diseases, helps keep you strong and reduces your risk of injuries. People who have been successful at maintaining weight loss are exercisers. So movement's really important for all those reasons and for weight maintenance for sure. Other things to do, make sure you're getting plenty of fruits and vegetables on your plate. Produce is a great way to add lots of nutrition to your diet without a lot of calories. If you think about limiting your portions of maybe protein and carbohydrate, you wanna fill that plate up with veggies. So add a big salad to your dinner, add plenty of vegetables in at lunchtime, make sure you're getting that produce in for those nutrients and also to help you feel fuller on fewer calories. Watch out for too much added sugar, especially in beverages. Too much added sugar can lead to weight gain over time, also doesn't help you feel satisfied, so can lead you to feeling hungrier throughout the day and doesn't provide a lot of nutrition. So limited added sugar, especially in beverages, can be a great place to start cutting back. Another great way to eat healthier is to try meal prep. We know that restaurant meals and takeout food can have a lot more calories than the food we prepare at home, 
plus can be more expensive. So doing a little bit of meal prepping can help set you up for success throughout the week to enjoy nutritious and home cooked meals that you've prepped yourself with a little head start. I hope you learned something today about calorie needs and when they can be helpful to calculate and when they might not be helpful, plus some tips for just an overall healthier diet. If you've got more questions about calories, weight loss, or healthy eating, drop them in the comments down below. And don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and ring that bell for more from me and health.